Welcome to European Journeys. This is the ninth stage of a tour that takes us to uh, Latvia and Estonia, where we explore the Reformation that happened there in the 16th century, which is called the Livonian Reformation. Now, for this stage, we are returning to the second largest city of Estonia, which is called Tartu. We were there in our previous stage, and we explored then the cathedral of the city, or I should say the ruins of the cathedral, which are located on top of a hill called Tome Magi. In Estonian, it simply means the hill of the cathedral. But for this stage, we are going to the lower part of the city to explore the town hall of the city of Tartu. It's a neoclassical building located at the end of a square that separates the town hall from the river Emayogi that goes through the city. Well, this town hall was built in the beginning of the 19th century after the great fires that had ravaged the city, two great fires, in fact, towards the end of the 18th century. And since the independence of Estonia in 1991, an ancient tradition was restored there, in Tartu, at the, at the town hall. There, every year, is proclaimed on the 24th of December, the Christmas peace. This is something that is done all across the Nordic nations, it's a tradition that was instituted, in fact, by the Queen of Sweden in the 17th century during the Thirty Years' War. Now, this shows that Estonia has a strong legacy with Sweden, and we are going to see why during this episode. But first, we need to go back to the beginning of the 16th century. The town hall will be a place of important decisions, just like in Riga and Tarin, Tartu II uh, would see important events happening right there in the town hall for the Reformation, uh, in favor of the Reformation, in fact. Now, let's get back a bit to the events that happened there. We talked about that already in our previous episode, and if you haven't watched it, I recommend you go and uh, watch it. you find it out in our archives. In fact, uh, the city of Tartu had appointed an evangelical preacher in the cathedral of Tartu, that was Hermann Marsov, but the Archbishop of Riga was strongly opposed to that and it tried to arrest Hermann Marsov. Finally, uh, Hermann Marsov had to flee the city. And as we saw, another evangelical preacher arrived. In the meantime, his name was Melchior Hoffman, and he gathered a lot of townspeople around him. We've seen in our previous episode that uh, uh, the Archbishop had tried to arrest Melchior Hoffman, that had led to uprisings in the city. And uh, finally, the outcome of these uprisings was that it was not a Melchior Hoffman that would be arrested, but the Archbishop himself, Johannes Brankenfeld. In fact, he was arrested because he was suspected to seek the support of the arch enemy of Livonia, that was the Russian army. Russia, in fact, was the arch enemy of Livonia at the time, and sadly it is still today for Estonia and Latvia. Well, that was not received very well, so Blankenfeld was arrested and he escaped, he narrowly escaped the death penalty. So that was the situation back then. And then in early 1525, just after the uprisings, in spite of the official reject rejection, condemnation of the Reformation, in the entire Livonia, the city council took the bold decision, just like in Riga, just like in Tallinn, at the time called Reval, well, the city council of what was called then Dorpat, Tartu, adopted officially the Reformation. Well, this didn't lead to a time of peace and prosperity quite yet for Tartu. In fact, there was a big climate of unrest that continued to be there in the city. A big climate of division, in fact. Not just between the Roman Catholics and the Protestants, but even among the Protestants themselves. Now, why was it so? Well, in fact, the city council appointed as the official reformer of the city, not Melchior Hoffman, as we could have expected, because really many townspeople were backing him, were really saw him as their leader. No, the city council appointed the co-reformer of Riga, who is Andreas Knöpke, and his name was Sylvester Tegetmeier. Now, why didn't they choose? Why couldn't they choose Melchior Hoffman? Well, there were several reasons behind that. Firstly, 
the attitude of the townspeople, the violence that had happened there during the uprisings, really had cooled down the city council with regards to Melchior Hoffman and, and thrown a little bit of doubts about who he was, really. And even more, these uprisings had spilled over in Peskov in Russia at the time when Russia was uh, threatening Estonia at the time, and Tartu, which was then called Dorpat, was probably one of the first cities that could fall under a Russian invasion. So for the city council, they were scared. So that was one of the reasons probably that Melchior Hoffman was not chosen as the reformer of the city. Now the second reason was a theological reason. In fact, there were many theological points that Melchior Hoffman was preaching that were somehow antagonistic with the theology of the reformers in general. For example, where he understood that the Bible was the word of God, just like the reformers, but for him, certain people had the gift to, un to have a deeper revelation or a deeper understanding, uh, some hidden truths in the gospel that would only be understood by certain people, certain prophets, as he uh, called them, that was not understood by everyone. Well, uh, that was not shared by the reformers at the time. For them, the Bible was accessible for everyone, should be accessible for everyone, if it were translated, of course, in the language of the people. But for Hoffman, no, there were some points in the Bible, some hidden truths that only certain class of people could access to. There were other theological issues, even with regards to the end of times, with which the reformers and Tegut Meyer disagreed. So this created a climate of division within the city. But finally, Melchior Hoffman would even be expelled from the city. And it was not because of his theological stance, but uh, because he became opposed to the mayor of the city. He, in fact, accused the mayor of the city to use um, the church property, in, to misuse the church properties. That was one reason. And another reason one day is that he uh, yelled at his daughter, the daughter of the mayor, because she arrived late at church. That was too much for the city council. All this, this event had piled up on top of many others, and finally Hoffman was expelled from the city of Dorpat. So, finally, I talked about Sweden, and let's see why uh, the influence of Sweden in the Reformation uh, was so significant. The city was divided, as I said, at the time of the Reformation, and that did not help, uh, because uh, later on, two invasions really would happen here in Tartu, not just one, but two. There was the Great Livonian War, uh, in which Russia began to invade the land. Uh, that happened toward the end of the 16th century. It lasted 25 years. And in the beginning of the 17th century, another war of three decades, the Polish-Swedish War, happened there on the land. Well, finally, uh, towards the 1630s, Sweden took over the land, and that was an important time, that was a crucial time really for Estonia, because Sweden at the time was strongly committed to advance the basic principles of the Reformation, which was that everyone should know the Bible, everyone should know the Word of God, therefore education should be spread for all people, and literacy should uh, rise in the country. So they uh, advanced that everywhere where they ruled. And so it was also the case there in Estonia. And so in 1631, the first printing house of Estonia was established there in Tartu. And then a year later, the first university of Estonia was established there. All of this happened during the Swedish rule because the Swedish government wanted to advance the basic principles of the Reformation, as I said, which was ultimately to know the Word of God, that everyone should know the Word of God, and so therefore should be educated to be able to do so. This is one of the great fruits of the Reformation that happened in all Protestant nations, including Estonia, uh, in this particular instance. I'm Cedric Placentino. See you next week for another stage of European Journeys. <music>